These are the new LaunchKey Mini Mark IV keyboards by Novation. They are portable keyboard controllers that let you play keys, drum, mix songs with popular DAWs like Ableton, Logic, Cubase, Reason, and more. And they've added new features we haven't seen before on small controllers, like inspiring chord sets and new arpeggiator modes. And for Ableton users, they've added the ability to sequence beats right on this keyboard. Let's take a look at all the features and how it compares to other popular keyboards. Now, the Launch Key Mark IV comes in a bunch of different sizes, and they've added a variation that you've been asking for. Yep, I have the Mini 25 and the Mini 37 versions right here. These have mini keys. And if you're looking for full-size keys, check out my full review of this keyboard's big brother. I'll link that video below. I have a feeling that these two mini versions are going to be the most popular because you get most of the newest features in a small package. This 37 key version is very important in the mini keyboard world because all too often the typical 25 key keyboard just feels too restrictive. If you're considering a new MIDI controller this size, you might also be looking at the Mini Lab from Artoria, the Oxygen Pro Mini from M Audio, the Akai MPK Mini, or the Native Instruments M32. All these keyboards are the most affordable from these companies, so the prices are similar. I'll cover some key differences in this video as well. And if you're interested in getting the Launch Key Mini or any of the other keyboards, I'll put links below the video. So let's talk about the keypad on the new Launch Key Mini. But first, these are MIDI controllers that you use with your computer to play software-based virtual instruments, control your DAW, and you can play hardware synths as well with this with the MIDI out. They don't have sounds built in. Okay, the Launch Key Mini 25 and 37 have what Novation is calling synth action keys with velocity sensitivity. No aftertouch on these keyboards. The keys aren't the best feature by far. In fact, Launch Key keybeds remain my least favorite as far as key feel, weight, bounce back, etc. They just feel a little cheap and too springy. I wish they had improved the keys on this new version. If you can deal with the longer size, the 37 version here is the one to get. You'll just enjoy having extra keys as you play. Also, you can adjust the velocity curve of the keys and the pads too. So how about the pads? I've always been a fan of pads on Novation gear. They're small, yes, but they have a good stiffness to them that makes finger drumming feel comfortable. The pads are velocity sensitive with poly aftertouch. There are multiple pad banks so you can play larger kits with this. The pads have a lot of additional functions like triggering clips in Ableton Live, sequencing, and selecting modes. I'll get into those later. The layout of the Launch Key Mini is pretty typical for mini keyboards. On the left, you have touch strips. You'll get wheels on larger launch keys. Touch strips are common on mini keyboards, but if you really prefer wheels, look at the Oxygen Pro by M Audio. To the right of the touch strips, you have transport buttons. You don't get a lot, just play and record, but those are the most important. You also have the shift button here, for deeper feature settings, and actually Shift plus Record is Capture MIDI for Ableton Live. You use the Shift button for some deeper features as well. You've got Octave Up and Down, Shift plus Octave Up and Down is Transpose. To the right of that, you have dedicated ARP and scale features, eight endless encoders. This is a great improvement over the previous model. I'm so glad they went with endless encoders on this new version. The arrow keys next to the encoders cycle through different encoder modes. Below that, you have 16 pads and pad and track navigation buttons. The 16 pads are more than just drum pads. They have secondary functions like arming tracks, mute, solo, lots more that I'll get into later. To the right here, you've got scene triggering for Ableton and a function button that changes what the bottom row does. So they squeezed a lot into this small form factor, which means for some functions, you'll need to press shift to access them or hold down a button to get deeper controls. On the larger models, you'll get 
more dedicated buttons, so navigating is easier on those. Honestly, the 37 key version has a lot of extra space. I wish they'd used it to give us more buttons on this one. There's room for it. You will find more buttons and even faders on other keyboards like the Mini Lab, but even the Mini Lab sacrifices some dedicated controls for simplicity. And also, this keyboard is missing a note repeat button you'll find on Akai MPK Minis. I always say this, think of what features you're going to use the most and make sure the keyboard you choose makes those features easily accessible. I'm glad Novation included a screen. The previous model of the Mini didn't have one. The screen is very useful and most keyboards at this price now have screens. The screen gives you feedback from your DAW, you can also see plug-in parameters, and your track names. You can adjust the brightness of the screen in the settings. All right, I'm going to cover DAW integration, which is quite extensive on these keyboards. But first, I want to go through some super interesting new tools that they've built into this Launch Key Mark IV, the Scale, ARP, and Chord tools. And hey, if this video is helpful or informative, can you take five seconds to hit the subscribe button? It's totally free and would mean the world to me because it makes a huge difference in the content and value I can bring to you. All right, Scale Mode on the Launch Key Mini is a useful tool that helps you stay within a specific musical key as you play. This feature can be useful if you're experimenting with the different scales or want to ensure that your notes fit harmonically with the rest of your track. You can select from lots of scales. Major, Minor, Dorian, there's so much here. The first encoder selects the root note, and the second lets you choose the scale type, and the third adjusts the mode. There are three modes. In Snap to Scale mode, any note you press that isn't in the selected scale will be automatically adjusted to the nearest note within the scale. The Filter Out of Scale mode takes a different approach by simply not playing any notes that fall outside of the chosen scale. I'll show you. Easy Scale Mode simplifies playing by mapping all the notes of your chosen scale to just the white keys. Let's choose something a little bit more complex here. The scale features on the Launch Key Mini are nice when you're composing, performing, or just exploring new stuff. And if you set the scale on the Launch Key, it sends that info to Ableton Live and sets the global scale there as well. The arpeggiator on the Launch Key Mini is a feature that we've seen before in the previous model, but they've actually given us more. There's some additional interesting stuff in here, like the ARP sequencer. Activate the ARP and the encoders let you change ARP settings. You have tempo, you can also sync it to your DAW or MIDI clock. You have swing, rate, gate, and modes for up, down, random, etc. You can also control the number of octaves over which the arpeggios play. There's even a chord type mode where all notes play simultaneously on each step, and a strum mode that emulates the way chords are strummed on a guitar. You can use the modulation wheel on the strum mode to activate each note. I haven't seen this before on a keyboard controller. Let me know if you've seen it before. You've got Mutate and Deviate next. This lets you create rhythmic patterns by adding rests within the arpeggio. This can turn a basic arp into something more complex and interesting, perfect for kind of creating evolving textures in your music. Now it gets even more interesting with the arp pattern feature. The ARP pattern feature on the Launch Key Mini gives you hands-on control over the individual steps of your arpeggio. This feature allows you to transform a basic arpeggio into something more interesting. When you activate ARP pattern mode, each of the Launch Key's pads represents a step in the arpeggio sequence. You can turn on steps or turn them off to create custom rhythmic patterns. Also, the ARP pattern feature includes controls for adding accents, ties, and ratchets to your sequence. Press the pads below the sequence to add them and the function button to change the mode. Accents increase the velocity of specific steps, making those notes stand out. Ties allow you to extend the length of a note, and ratchets subdivide a step into multiple triggers, adding rapid fire repetitions. All these extras really take the ARP features to a new level. 
that we don't usually see on MIDI controllers. I think they're a fun creative tool and go beyond what ARP features you might have included in your DAW. Novation did a good job with the ARP feature. What do you think? Do these extra scale ARP and chord features matter to you? Well, wait a second, we haven't gotten into chords yet. The Launch Key Minis come with some very cool, unique chord features that can really help with making music, especially when it comes to creating harmonies and complex chord progressions. And Novation has gone above and beyond what other keyboards offer here. There are three main chord modes. First up is chord map mode. This mode is about exploration. It allows you to select a scale and then gives you access to a range of chords that fit within that scale. So the chords are complementary. The launch keys pads are used to trigger these chords, and you can manipulate them further using the encoders to adjust parameters like chord spread and inversion. The first two encoders are called Adventure and Explore, and they pretty much just adjust the chord sets to change the complexity. This mode is great for experimenting with different harmonic ideas and discovering new progressions that you might not have thought of on your own. And the orange pads also change the way the chords are played. Hold down an orange pad and then keep pressing the blue chord and you get some interesting variations in how the chord plays. I love inspiring chord tools like this, but what I consider a major oversight is that the chords don't feed the arpeggiator. It would have been so cool to have these chords activated with the arp patterns included here too. Maybe they can do that in a firmware update. So this is not a deal breaker, but it is a limitation of such an excellent feature on this keyboard. Now, we have seen great chord inspiration features like this on native instruments keyboards. Well, not really the keyboard, it's built into the software complete control. They have chord sets like this, complementary chords, but you have to be running the software to use them with their keyboards. Novation actually built the chord sets into the Launch Key Mini, which is even better. Okay, so we have two more chord modes. User Chord Mode allows you to create and store your own custom chords. You can assign a specific chord to each pad by playing the notes you want directly on the keyboard. This is especially useful if you have a few go-to chords that you use frequently in your tracks. Next is Fixed Chord Mode. In this mode, you can play a chord on the keyboard and then lock it in so that every key you play afterwards will play that same chord just transposed to different pitches. I think Novation went above and beyond with the ARP and chord mode specifically. I think these are some great tools that are actually useful when coming up with creative musical ideas. All right, let's get into DAW control next. But before we do, do you know how easy it is to get your music out there to the world? You can do it yourself with DistroKid, the sponsor of today's video. DistroKid lets you upload your music to Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, pretty much everywhere. Best of all, they make it really easy. Just upload your track, add some artwork, and they do the rest. DistroKid also collects earnings for you when your listeners play or purchase your music. And they help you market your music with tools built right in. A hyperfollow page lets you share your music with your friends on Facebook or anywhere you can share a link. And they can easily follow you to get notified of your upcoming releases. I've actually created two dedicated videos on DistroKid to give you all the details. You can watch those right here. And if you're ready to sign up, I'll include a link in the video description that'll give you 7% off your first year of membership. So the Launch Key Mini has custom scripts for Ableton Live, Logic Pro, Cubase, Reason, and FL Studio. And you can use the HUI protocol for Reaper, Pro Tools, and Studio One. Let's cover Ableton Live first because Launch Key really covers a lot for Ableton, more than any other DAW, but I'm glad they're expanding to more DAWs now. And new for Ableton is the Step Sequencer, which is so useful. For Ableton Live, of course, you've got transport controls, play, record, and I guess that's about it. But you also have the capture MIDI with the shift button. This is the feature in Ableton that allows you to capture what you were playing on the keyboard, even if you weren't recording. You are missing some transport controls that are available on other keyboards of this size. Other keyboards may offer things like loop on or off and tap tempo. The encoders control plugin parameters and the mixer, of course. And of course you have clip and scene triggering. And when the pads are in mixer mode, you can use them to stop clips, 
mute, and solo tracks. So you can launch clips. and even record new clips directly from the launch key. And the pads match the clip colors in Ableton Live. This setup is ideal for live performances or when you're building up ideas in session view with the scene up and down or the track navigation buttons. There are multiple encoder modes on the launch key. In plugin mode, the encoders give you direct access to the parameters of the currently selected device or instrument. You can tweak effects, adjust synth settings, and more, all without needing to touch your mouse. And of course, you see the parameter you're changing and the value on the screen. If your device has more than eight parameters, you can switch the encoder banks with these buttons here. If you put this in mixer mode, the encoders control things like track volume levels and pans. You can also change the mode to sends to control sends on the mixer. Now the transport encoder mode is also interesting. This mode allows you to scrub through your arrangement, zoom in and out, and adjust loop start and end points. You can also use it to navigate between markers that you've set up in your project. The pads in Ableton Live have three main options, clip, sequencer, and drums. Clip mode lets you launch and control clips as I showed you earlier. Sequencer mode gives you the ability to step sequence MIDI notes directly from the launch key on a 16 step sequence, which is great for creating drum patterns or melodic sequences. Press shift and da to get into the sequencer mode, then load a drum kit and a blank clip and press play. Press a keyboard key that corresponds to a drum sound and then press the pad to start adding those into the sequencer. You can also adjust velocity and length by holding one of the pads in the sequence and then moving the encoders. And you can even nudge notes or lengthen notes. You can use this same sequencer feature with melodies. I can't tell you how happy I am to see the sequencer feature on the Launch Key Mark IV. If you have longer clips, you can see additional sequence pages using the up and down arrows. It's just so useful given that Ableton doesn't really already have a good way to sequence beats like this. So Novation always covers Ableton Live very well on their Launch Keys, so how about other DAWs? Let's explore what we can do in Logic. You have transport controls, of course, and mixer controls, which allows you to adjust levels, panning, and other mixer functions directly from the launch key. The encoders are mapped to control volume and pan of your tracks. And you even have EQ control as well, which is really nice. But when you switch to plugin mode, the encoders control the parameters of the currently selected plugin or instrument. If the plugin has more than eight parameters, you can switch between the banks with the buttons here. Another cool feature they've implemented is live loops in Logic, which lets you control Logic's live loop feature directly from the launch key. Transport navigation buttons on the launch key also integrate well with with Logic, it allows you to move between tracks and control their selection, record arm, solo, mute, things like that. Now, the Launch Key Mini will control FL Studio, but honestly, if you're an FL Studio user, you might want to check out their dedicated keyboard for FL called the FL Key. That gives you lots of control and the ability to sequence beats using FL's channel rack. But with the Launch Key, you still have lots of control, mixer volumes, pan, as well as plugin control and transport as well. If you're a Cubase user, You'll get mixer controls for faders, volume pans, EQ control, and you can use the pads to solo, arm, and mute. Now, although the launch key can control some of your DAW's stock plugins, there is something missing. Dedicated virtual instrument control, like we've seen on Artoria and Native Instruments keyboards. Both Artoria and Native Instruments give you tight integration with their own software, namely Analog Lab and Complete Control, respectively. This means you can browse presets, load them, and then tweak parameters. 
When keyboards have that kind of integration, it makes exploring sounds so much nicer, especially with large libraries. That type of integration is missing on the launch keys. So if you're a heavy user of Arturia or Contact, you want to explore what Arturia native instruments have to offer when it comes to that type of virtual instrument integration. I really like that type of integration, but given that Novation is not a big name in software instruments, they really can only give us stock plugin control, which they have done really well. All right, I haven't showed you everything under the settings menu. You can do a lot here, including setting MIDI channels for keys, drums, velocity curves, aftertouch, and pad and screen brightness. So the build quality of the Launch Key Mini is pretty much on par with what we've seen before. This is definitely not meant to be a premium keyboard. It's definitely on the budget side of things. The knobs do feel really good with good resistance. The buttons feel good as well no audible click. The encoders are definitely looser than Artoria encoders, which those are a bit too tight for me. I feel like the Minilab 3 and the Oxygen Pro from M-Audio feel a little better as far as build goes, but those are larger keyboards overall. The Launch Key is one of the smallest mini keyboards you can get right now, so if you prefer something very compact, this is a great keyboard to get. On the back, you have a mini MIDI out, and sustain pedal port and the USB-C connector. Not too much over here, but it's good that they included that MIDI out because those chord and arc features would be so nice to use on an external synth. So Novation has included a very interesting software package with the new launch keys. Really unique stuff here. You have a few effects from Club Grand, some G4 synths, and even an orchestral bundle from Orchestral Tools. You also get Ableton Live Lite good stuff to get you started making music and very different from some other companies. So how does the Launch Key Mini compare to the competition? Well, I really think they've given us a lot with this new keyboard. They've covered the top DAWs, given us that Ableton Live sequencing feature, and the new chord and ARP tools are really nice as well, above and beyond what we usually see on budget mini controllers. If you're an Ableton user, you get outstanding control of Ableton Live with clip and scene triggering. Now, if you're looking for virtual instrument integration, you'll get better control with Artoria and Native Instruments keyboards. Of course, that's with their own plugins. Native Instruments has a 32 key mini keyboard, the M32. And while that has nice native instrument software integration, it's missing a lot of features like drum pads and onboard arpeggiators and scale and chord features. It's worth noting what features you're most interested in before you make a decision on one of these keyboards. And if you're looking for a larger version of the Launch Key with a few more features and maybe even faders, check out my full review of the Launch Key 49. I really like what Novation has done with the new Launch Key Mini. They've leveled up the features for Ableton Live users, which are their core base for years. And they've really given us some great chord and R features that can be used with your DAW or even with external synths. If you have any questions about the Launch Key Mini, leave them in the comments below. If you're interested in checking out any of the keywords I mentioned in this video, I've added links below as well. And hey, if you're looking for my latest keyboard review, watch the video right here. Keep making the music you love, and I'll see you soon.